Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here today uh, and to welcome Sir Geoffrey Hill, uh, who has joined me for a conversation uh, about W.B. Yeats um, and uh, why Yeats, uh, let me make it clear to begin with that the Yeats is entirely my own suggestion and not Geoffrey's. Uh, but I, I, I wished really to talk with Geoffrey a little about some of the things that are, are issues, as we say, in reading a poet as major as Yeats, and yet a poet as problematic uh, as Yeats is. And one of the things that I, I wish, I suppose, most to talk to Geoffrey about today is the whole concept of Yeats's self-revisings, changings, over an extremely long uh, and in many ways tortuous, tortuously conceived poetic career. Uh, and uh, to that end, really, I thought it might be useful if we looked at certain instances when Yeats's very texts uh, were reconceived, rethought, rewritten. Um, and I shall be reading bits of Yeats from time to time, uh, and I apologise in advance for the strange things that will happen to my voice when I do that. Uh, but b before I do that, I, I just wanted to, in a way, start off by asking Geoffrey a little about the notion of revision and whether a how, uh, really the question of whether how, me, how many good poets have been consistent or, or prolific self-revisers. It strikes me there are very few, but I, I wonder, Geoffrey, what you think. I can, can you hear this? <clears throat> I can think off the top of my head of two or three and all of them disastrous. Um, a very fine American poet called John Crow Ransom uh, of whom I'd be sub very surprised if many people here had heard, uh, because like another fine poet, Alan Tate, he has been rather written out of contemporary American literary history, uh, because as Southern agrarians, they held views on the black-white relationship, which is not well regarded now. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, in old age, he rewrote nearly every poem in his relatively small oeuvre and ruined it. Uh, and he revised, he thought, in the interests of some kind of moral integrity. Beware any poet when he or she revises on the grounds of moral integrity. Hmm. Um, I think it's generally agreed that Ransom's rewritings are appalling and should simply be ignored. If you read Ransom, and I hope you will, read his poems as they were originally published in the 1920s, uh, 1930s. Um, Auden rewrote disastrously mm. that very famous poem, September the 1st, 1939, uh, which originally contained the line, we must love one another or die. Um, he wrote that out of the revised poem saying, incomprehensibly to me, but we must love one another and die, therefore implying that again he was guilty of some kind of moral imaginative failure to perceive the obvious. But he was perfectly correct to say we must love one another or die because he meant die spiritually, die emotionally. He's saying that if we, if we don't love, then we, then we are dead in spirit. And that seems to me an entirely acceptable sentiment. 
and no reason at all to, to take the line out and drastically reduce the poem. Uh, and uh, one other example I can think of, Marianne Moore. Again, I mean, I look, looking, at the, looking at the response, I, I get the impression that she is not a, that she is not a, a poet you now widely read over your evening cocoa, uh, but a very fine one. Uh, Elizabeth Bishop, whose name you will know, was greatly inspired by her, by a personal friendship and by the example of Moore's poetry. Um, Marianne Moore wrote in her relative youth, early middle age, a, a poem called Poetry, beginning, I too dislike it, uh, things important beyond all this fiddle, and it went on, expanded into, into several stanzas. In her collected poems, that, is, that poem is reduced to one line. Uh, again, monstrous misjudgment. Monstrous misjudgment. Yeats is the only poet I can think of, and of course my memory is fallible. Yeats is the only poet I can think of who can be applauded on some, though not all, of his rewriting. Um, and whereas Moore, Auden, and Ransom rewrote out of some sense of guilt, entirely unnecessary guilt in my view, um, Yeats rewrote for quite different reasons. Um, I've been reading recently those, some of those wonderful little tracts he brought out with the Koala Press, uh, which I would strongly recommend any student of Yeats to try to get hold of. A Packet for Ezra Pound is one I've been reading very recently. Uh, Passages from a Diary Kept in 1930 is another that I've been reading, reading very recently. And it's quite clear that for Yeats, rewriting was a commitment to something beyond the self. It, of course, it included the self, but it, was, it, it really turned on philosophical issues. Um, how does the individual voice integrate itself with the larger community? Uh, I was looking through this, expecting to find a poem that is, in fact, not here, but which is very pertinent to our conversation and our discussion. The friends who have it, I do wrong whenever I remake. remake a song should know what issue is at stake. It is myself mm. that I remake. Mm. But that myself, that remaking of the self, again, is a quite different thing from the desperate scrabbling to fudge the evidence, which is so painful mm. in Moore and Auden and Ransom. It is something to do with the necessity to turn the private figure into the public statement. Um, sorry, I, 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 I've gone on too My long. only <coughs> remark on that quatrain... Which is that it's so it. obvious you didn't think it necessary to... Not it. quite, but that, it, <coughs> that it, it carries ironies too. Yes. In, in that it, is, uh, it, it was printed just the once. It was printed in 1908... And then, never, of course, then, then, the, then, in the, then in the collected, obviously. It's in the Variorum edition, it's posthumously, in the Variorum. Ah. but it is not mm. in any of Yeats's own ah, subsequent very, collected. Uh, yes, I, I but, had to slip my but mind. In yeah. a way, the, mm. the irony gets, gets richer or yes. stranger yes. because yes. He, he wrote another uh, quatrain, mm. which, if you look at the 1908 uh, Stratford, uh, Stratford collected, mm -hmm. Uh, by Bullen. Bullen. That's yeah, right. Bullen. Yeah. Uh, if you look at that, there's a, a volume devoted to the first ever Yeats bibliography, which mm -hmm. is, 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 is the concluding volume. Who, uh, was that Bullen? The, it's Bullen in the Bullen the, edition. Did, but who it, did the bibliography? It, 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 it is uh, the man who, who finally did the, the letters. Oh, yes. Alan Wade? That's right. Wade. Alan it's Wade, it's yes. a young yeah. Alan Wade. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, that bibliography yeah. contains the uh, evidence, if you like, of a huge world of scattered mm 
and often discarded writings. Mm -hmm. So Yeats allowed this to happen, blessed it, and then contributed a quatrain in preface to that right. bibliography, yeah. Yeah. which goes, Accursed, who brings to light of day the writings 